A couple of weeks ago, I tore down a Kia V6 that was probably the worst core we've seen on the channel. It was absolutely obliterated. And today we're gonna to tear down a Honda V6 that may come close to that level of damage. I don't see how it could possibly be worse, but this J35 Z2 came out of a 2009 Honda Accord and it is pretty, it's pretty bad. It's bad. First, we'll start with the good side. It's a very small inspection port. If you're gonna do this, make sure it's much bigger. See, like this. This is what you want for an inspection port. That way you can check out the crank, you can check out everything on the inside of this engine. There's a giant hole here, another one here, and uh, I think there's one more. Uh, yeah, there's another one right there in the pan. The Honda J-Series is one of the most well-liked family of engines that has ever been produced. However, not all J-Series are created equal. This J35 Z2 came out for the 2008 model year Honda Accord, except V6 manual, and it makes 271 horsepower. However, it comes with something called VCM, which stands for Very Crappy Motor. I mean, Variable Cylinder Management. Yes, these engines have cylinder deactivation on the rear bank. Now, if you talk to anyone that has worked on these cars or works at a dealership, They'll tell you they come in all the time with fouled spark plugs on the rear bank, misfire codes, they're burning oil, and ultimately the repair is to re-ring the rear bank of cylinders. Now, I've seen a lot of engines over the years, and I can tell you that I've never seen an engine that had different rings on the rear bank than they did on the front bank. And the rear bank's the one with cylinder deactivation, which tells me it's not a ring problem or a component problem, it's a VCM problem. Now this engine came from a 2009 Accord V6 that my friend bought, and I'm gonna read the repair order. It says, customer states that the vehicle shut off on highway, check and advise, smoking from engine area. Mm-hmm, that checks out. That totally checks out. Before I pull the plugs, I wanted to point out another flaw with these engines. The valve covers get distorted here where the coils bolt on and it does create a leak where you can't get the tube seal to seal. As you can tell, it's pretty wet around this area, so I bet this one was leaking. You can clearly see that that's uh, no longer circular. Let's go ahead and get these plugs out of here. Oh, that's not good. That's, that is somehow worse than the first. Also not good but the best so far. The rear cylinders don't look too terrible, but the, the front cylinders, lots of malices in all of the combustion palaces. They're, um, they're bad. Obviously, we need to know if it turns all the way over, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it does because all the torque converter bolts are out of it, but let's see what it feels like. Uh-oh. Uh, you know, I don't know how he got the torque converter bolts out, but clearly Jim knows magic. Now it's time to peel the intake manifold off. Now this is hardware that I will probably save because it's fancy. Huh. Oh, okay. Well, looking inside the intake, just in the plenum, you can tell that there's lots of little bitty metal chunks in there. It's not where you want to find metal. Now I'm going to remove the top part of the plenum. I don't think I need to do that to get it off the engine, but I want to see what else is jammed inside of here. Well, I guess we're going to take the whole thing off at once. Let's see if we can uh, split this. I don't know if this is going to actually work or not.
Uh, some of you may be saying, oh, you're ruining it by pulling it apart. Listen, this thing's full of metal. I can't sell it anyway. Oh, man. It's gnarly. That's, that's all metal. Well, even the upper part of the plenum has lots of metal fragments stuck to it. But when you get to the lower, this is the most metal I've ever seen inside of an intake manifold, ever. I mean, and then the oil, lots of oil. It's like an extra reservoir. And I don't think that's from the crankcase system, but I could be wrong. You can definitely tell that one's probably okay, okay, okay. And then this is where it starts getting really, really bad. Now we're going to peel the injectors and rails off so we can get the lower manifolds off. Just get these gaskets. <laughs> oh my God. Ah. Uh. Oh man. Well, you know how I said it had four holes in it? I found more. So there's two holes, one of which is occupied by what appears to be a rod. There's a connecting rod sticking through the valley. That's amazing. And then of course, broken shards of Aluminum block. This is going to be great. Now we can peel the front valve cover off. Oh, well, we can see that oil changes were scarce in this engine. So it's pretty varnished in here. I don't really see anything too alarming outside of the fact that this clearly was not very well maintained. But let's get to the other side. Somehow this side looks much cleaner could be due to the way the crankcase ventilation system is designed. But again, I don't really see anything too terribly wrong with the valve train. Nothing glaring at this point. Now it's time to look in the intake ports. This is the rear cylinder head. Of course, we're starting with the rear. It's not really ideal, but obviously there's some sort of engine fluid sitting in that one. That one looks okay. Valves are open in this one. On the front head, the first cylinder has a couple pieces of metal on top of the valves, but it's not terrible. I mean, it's, it's bad, but the middle cylinder, a large quantity of nuggets. They're a little too small to be nuggets on top of those valves. And in the rear, much more shrapnel, it's a finer, finer grade stuff, but you're never supposed to find loose metal in your intake ports. Now we'll strip the uh, timing system. We'll get the crank pulley out of the way first. They're usually not that easy. And now a whole bunch of tents. Well, still has a belt on it. Uh, the timing belt, it looks okay. It's a little on the shiny side, which is 
Not something you'd like to refer to a belt as. Shiny's no good, but it's not coming apart. It's hard to tell whether it's original or not. It says CD329, made in Thailand. I can tell you this engine has 180,000 miles on it, and no one really has been in here recently. That doesn't mean it hasn't been done. It's well past the time when it should have had a belt. We'll get these loose first. Good. Ooh, that was violent. Let go. Let's get the tensioner out of the way. Tensioner has lots of resistance. I bet it's still good. While we're in here, let's get this water pump out of the way. Well, still had some coolant in there. The water pump looks pretty good. I can tell it's got gray RTV around it, so I don't think that's original. I think it's a, it's a Honda pump though. Well, that'd be a really good spare for somebody. And the uh, water pump, it looks like, uh, at least it's not like a Toyota. Next, we'll get the coolant crossover pipe out of the way. What are we caught on over here? Oh nice, it's coming out with the uh, tube. <laughs> mm. Well here's a better look at the damage to the valley. And you can definitely tell that a rod poked a hole and then found a better parking spot. Um, that's pretty impressive, the rod is still hanging out in here. Ooh, it's loose, so we should be able to, oh look at that. That was just kind of hanging out in the block. That's a nice little souvenir. On these cylinder heads, I can remove them without pulling the valve train. I may pull the valve train out of one cylinder head after they're off, but for now, we're just gonna pull the head. Pull ahead and see what we see. Nope. Blue. Let's get the head bolts out of the way first. Oh, tons of coolant. <laughs> oh man, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not what you want to see in there. Keep in mind, this is the good side. So this piston, obvious marks is making contact with the valve. In fact, the whole top of the piston is cracked. And it's also a little, you know, tilty. This one looks okay, but also damage from valves. And then... And you have this one. Sorry, it's dark. That one is definitely not connected to anything. So we have to do our test. Let's start at the front. Okay, we've got one disconnecting rod. Two disconnecting rods. Well, I think that one's all the way bottomed out, so I don't know if that's connected or not. But I'm going to go with no since it's at a 15 degree angle. And no surprise here. Obvious marks of making contact with pistons in every single cylinder. Some worse than others. This one's bent right there. You can see that valve doesn't really seat correctly. In fact, most of these don't. And then there's some damage along the edge 
of the combustion chamber. These actually look a lot better than I expected, although I still don't think I could sell them as is. I don't know if these have any value anyway. Now just remember, this is the bad side. The other side was the good side. It disabled the wrong cylinders. <laughs> wow, this might actually be worse than the Kia. <laughs> oh, I don't even know where to begin with this. <laughs> There's nothing left. It's gone. It's all gone. And it looks like soup, metal soup in the pan. The, the block is... Um, it's broken badly. Not that we didn't think it was already, but the bore is, it's missing sections of bore. I can still see uh, stuff bolted together down there. Uh, there's no way I can flip this engine over. I'm going to have to pull the pan with it upright. And the head is just, <laughs> it's like a hammer forged combustion chamber and valves and none of them fit right. They're all distorted. <laughs> this thing waged war and at least it beat the pistons now let's rip this head apart and we're just gonna start zipping all the bolts out like normal all right I don't really know what that 10 does, so we're going to try to leave that in place. You guys are going to laugh if, if you know that it needs to come off. This is probably a little more rough than I would want to do this. Oh wait, there's a place to pry right here. Well, that's, that's pretty simple. Now, it looks like I can remove the shaft of cam right now. I was wrong. Oh, there's a, there's a thing on the other side. Ah. Does the cam come out the other way? Yes, it does. Camshaft removal. Cam in head. So I need to know something. Is is that bad? It sure doesn't look good. I'm not sure if uh, Dodge made this cam. I'm kidding. The rest of the cam looks okay, I guess. There's some uh, some grooving in the journals, but. That lobe there, whew, that is, that's bad. And all the valve train looks okay. All the rollers, they look all right. I think this just, yeah, this just comes apart really easy. All this stuff just, uh, you know, well, it's supposed to, I think. Or maybe there's clips, I don't know. I don't need to take that apart. Now for something that I have never done on the channel. We're gonna remove the valves from the cylinder head. I actually have the correct tool, probably not the easiest tool. They make pneumatic ones. My pneumatic tool will not fit the head. My tool won't fit that. No, we're not gonna go there. But we gotta be safe here. You can never be too safe, you know, when you're working on a cylinder head. You just, you just don't know. So we're gonna be as safe as possible. One pair of safety glasses. You know, I'm doing all of this in lieu of safety tote. I have no idea where safety tote went. And well, I fear, I fear it's gone. Anyway, let's be safe about this. As safe as possible because you just, 
you just, I need all the protection I can get. We're dealing with valve springs here. There, that, I feel safe. So let's, uh, let's see if we can get some valves out of this. I can't see anything. It's fine. That's kind of not working. No, that's, that's bad. What am I doing here? Not the right thing. All right, let's get serious about this. We can do this the right way. What this does is, it's like a big clamp, compresses the valve spring so you can pull the keepers out. I don't know if I got this too tight or not. I do. Yep, still too tight. Or I'm just too weak, that's possible too. What is happening? Oh, that's dangerous. That's why you wear safety glasses. What am I doing here? There we go. And now it won't come out. Oh no, a, a keeper's still in there. I need to get a magnet. You just kind of, well, that's not going to work, is it? I'm just riding the struggle bus today. There we go. That was worth it for one. Then you can pull the spring out, and then you can push the you can push the you can push the. Okay, you can't you can't push the valve down. That one's that one's bent. Let's uh let's continue here. And normally you would keep track of the keepers, but since this engine is, this head's never going back together, there's no need. Well, that valve came out. We're just gonna set it back in there so we don't lose track of where it is. I'm gonna knock the rest of these out and I'll show you what I find. I really did want to do things the right way, but sometimes, the right way just takes too long. So now you gotta do it the wrong way. Now, do not do this to a cylinder head you care about. That would be a bad idea. Sometimes the wrong way is the fast way. I'm just saying. Now there's three valves stuck in this head, so they just need a little bit of persuasion. Or a hammer. I can't imagine why they'd be stuck. That would that's just it doesn't make any sense to me. The main reason for this exercise is to show you how bad the valves look outside of the head. When they're in the head, you can definitely tell they're bent, but when they're out of the head, it's much more apparent. So you can really see what happened here. They're, uh, they're pretty much all pointed in different directions. There's some, they're bent in three places. Some just two. Some just one. Nope, that's in three or four. And then look at the amount of metal on the top of the valve. That's a, a ton of metal. It's not carbon buildup, that's metal buildup. I just remembered that Jim told me this wasn't drained. So we're gonna drain it. And obviously it's not full of oil because it has so many holes in it. Oh, coolant's in there. Well, that's not what's supposed to be there unless they started making green engine oil, which I don't think they do. Now we can pull the pan. Oh, 
Oh my. That is, that is the most finely shredded engine I've seen. That's a lot. There's a, that's a skirt from a piston. That's piston. Oh, look at that. That looks like the bushing that goes around a wrist pin. I don't see any wrist pins in here. Oh, there's, there's part of a rod. Well, that is, there's a lot, that is deep. It, this is inches thick. Oh, hey, look, ring, ring, ring. Somebody get the phone, sir clip. That's another bushing, I suppose. It's really hard to identify when they're so destroyed. More up here. That is the most amount of engine gravel I think we've ever seen in a pan. That is significant. Now, normally I'd flip the engine over, but I feel like this looks like a really full diaper. Like maybe there's six blowouts in here. I don't think flipping it over is gonna be a good idea, which means I'm gonna have to pull the pickup out upside down and then pull the pan, the windage tray down. This is gonna be messy. First, the oil pickup. Now, the windage tray, maybe? Yeah, that's, that's a full one, folks. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's a family-sized order. I don't even think we can call this a windage tray anymore. It's more like an engine strainer. All the small parts wound up in the pan. It's like sifting engine parts. So, lots of piston nuggets. There's one, two, three. There's some smaller ones here. You know, you paid for the whole meal, you might as well get them all. Another one. So many more. Uh, that's the big end of a rod. And that got really hot. More piston chunks. So many. And then look at the rods. We've got a, well that's not round anymore. There's one, two, three, four. That's, that's so, I don't even know what to do with all this. Obviously you can't fix this. There's not enough ramen in the world. But the wrist pins, they look okay. They're ready to go. Uh-oh. It broke a wrist pin. It's it's damaged. I mean, it's not broken. Okay, it's broken, but... Oh, man. The amount of force it takes to do that to a wrist pin. It's amazing. Now, we have five wrist pins, which means that this engine emptied out five out of six rods, we think. We don't know yet. There's still more, but look at this molten rod. All right. I mean, it, it's like lava. Just pour this out here. And <laughs> the windage <laughs> tray looks like you shot it with a shotgun that was filled with engine parts. <laughs> oh man. This is this is probably worse than the Kia. <laughs> it's like a, a, a DIY do-it-yourself destructo engine kit. Well, now it's time we can actually turn this upside down. Oh yeah, there's still fluid in here. Coolant. Wow. So much wow. This uh, this has maximum ventilation. 
giant holes in the front. Does this turn? Oh no, why would that turn? But these all turn. Oh, not these. Oh, I think I see what happened here. Um, oh my, this is, I'm sorry, the Kia, the Kia engine was bad. This is, this is worse. <laughs> I can't believe it's worse. And it's a Honda. They just, they just seem to do everything better. Next, I'm gonna remove the oil filter housing. And now, we'll get the oil pump out of the way. Oh, it's raining parts out of it. That's not supposed to happen. Oh. <laughs> oh, I just dropped a whole bunch of engine stuff. What came out? Looks like uh, piston chunks. We'll, uh, we'll collect those for later. Let's get this rear main seal plate out of the way. It's probably gonna rain some more parts. Maybe not. No, it definitely rains apart. Now, I guess since, uh, oh wait, it does have one connecting rod in here, I think. I think we gotta take those two out before we can go any further. I might have to uh, turn this crank over. I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. It shouldn't be too bad to turn over. Or I could just almost knock myself out, that's fine. I'm okay, it didn't hit me anywhere that matters. Oh, it's raining more parts out of it. No, no, definitely not. Okay, so we're kind of st stuck here. Um, let's get this unbolted first, I suppose. I have, a, actually, I have a tool for this. This should do the trick. This is fun, really fun. Oh, that scared me. There, that works. Now we can pull all the main cat bolts. Well, I guess we don't need to save those, huh? Oh, that one's very stuck. Man, this one does not want to come out. We'll try some things. Didn't expect that. Still stubborn. Well, there's another one. Now it'll come out. This is absolutely impressive. I, I am so impressed right now. The bottom of this bore is just, it's gone. There's two holes from rods. I don't know if they're from, well, actually, it looks like each of those tossed a rod through that valley straight up. I, wow. Those pistons are still located in their bores. And then you've got this rod, which does one of these uh, swinging maneuvers. Uh, I'm, I'm shocked and impressed. Just a little bit of piston material there, nothing big. And then that looks like, that is the part of the rod that goes around the wrist pin and it is pointed up and it's jammed into the valley. It's fine. It's totally fine. So let's uh, knock these out, or should we go to the crank? Let's, let's go to the crank. So the crank is, it's rough. I mean, there's massive dents everywhere. There's still a main bearing on here. Oh no, that's bad. Was this one any better? 
Not really. And then most of the rods, the big ends of the rods, uh, they're still hanging out here. They seem to rotate okay. That one, not so much. I don't know that we're going to be able to get these off because the bolts are so deformed. I'm, I'm just, I'm blown away at the amount of damage to this crankshaft. It's, it's probably the worst one we've seen. Well, let's start here. This shouldn't be too bad, I don't think. Oh, it's, it's dropping bearings, it's fine. Oh man, I can't use the end of my hammer. Now I really don't want to do any damage to this piston. Nope, that's not working either. Now we're moving. Oh, it's, it's a tilty one. Oh, that's all there is to it. Wow, these are really uh, not wanting to come out here. Yeah, that one's broken too. Oh, wow. Next, we're gonna make an attempt to get these bolts out. I have my doubts. Oh, there's one. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Let, okay, it's out, it's fine. This is just amazing to me that, oh, this one, that one's gonna require a little more, a little more extra additional. I think that'll come off. Impressive. Okay, this one I have my doubts on. This one is extra bad. Uh, there's not enough of a bolt to get the socket onto. It's not, that's not worth the time, I'm sorry. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get that one apart. Look at the amount of impact marks on it, it's amazing. But we do have one more that I think will come off. I'm pretty sure I can get this one out. No! So here's what survived. The bearings, not so great. All of the big ends of the rods are just, they're just, they're mutilated. It's like swinging six hammers, well five. I guess this one didn't quite break. It twisted, but it didn't compress. This is probably twisted from the direction of whatever got in its path while the engine was turning and the momentum of the crankshaft and whatever was bolted to it. That was probably the one that stopped it. But to have one, I mean, I you can't call that surviving. That's just, that's wow. And the crankshaft, some of the journals on the crank are pretty rough. And I think the culprit is gonna be this one here. Because as you can see, this has a nice sheen to it, but this one, it's very discolored. There's lots of copper transfer from the bearing. It got cooked from friction, lack of lubrication, I believe. And this is likely what's left of that journal's rod. It's, uh, it's all charred, it's like lava rock. It's just, it's, it's so impressive. And it, it technically broke a wrist pin. It's, wow. Excuse me, we're not done yet. How much engine material can this hold? A lot. Oh, there's some rings in there. Oh, there's so much more. When does it end? <laughs> I think that's the end of the line. That's... That all came out of the pickup. That is it's incredibly impressive. Oh yeah, we're still not done. We still gotta pull the oil pump apart. Oh, 
it doesn't want to come out. It's coming out. Let's go. Wow, it's very thin. Nope, not going to say it. The oil pump isn't terrible, but there are some grooves in the housing right there and coinciding grooves on the actual drive gears. Not a lot of debris in there though. Let's just take another gander at all the damage here. That all came out of the pickup. This is the surviving big ends of the rod. A couple piston cupcakes, nothing, not, a, not the full deal. This is the only one that survived and well, we'll use that term loosely. Also looking at the uh, main caps, they clearly got hot too. They're discolored. Not all of them, just some of them. And then here's the oil pan's contents. That was uh, the remnants of, I don't know, five and a half, four pistons, five pistons. And then here's the rest of it. We've got our wrist pins all lined up. There's the uh, blowout tray. And then we found those in there. Those would make excellent keychains. I might keep one for myself. But wait, there's more. Because Jim was nice enough to save me all of the pieces he found when he tore this engine out of the car. All of that was found in various places. That's block. Ooh, a whole bunch more rings. That's a piston squirter bolt head. There's more charred. Man, look at the color on that. It's amazing. It's part of that rod. It likely chewed up a bearing, and that's why there's so much discoloration in that. There's the big end top of the rod, or small end, I should say. Another section of rod. Oh, wait, we're still not done. I still have to try to fish that piece of rod out of the block. Oh, this is the piece of the rod that I wish to extract. It's loose, so there is a chance. It may just take a little bit of uh get out of here. Go away, or not. Yes, yes. Almost. Very good. This is the section of rod that I just fished out of that block. This is just, it's so terrible. It's a good thing this core was free. Thanks, Jim. Looking at this leftover rod, it is, uh, it, it is twisted, but it's also twisted because I believe that line in the rod there that doesn't exist on the other side that's from something impeding this rod's movement. And I think that's why this is twisted. I don't think this is trying to compress anything. There's not a ton of marks on the bottom of the piston. Uh, there's not a lot of marks. Okay, this, I lied. There, there are a lot of marks on the bottom of the counterbalances, but they're impact marks, not rotational marks as such. Typically, when you compress water, the rod gets shorter. The bottom of the piston makes contact with the counterweight. And in this case, I'm pretty sure this was an oil starvation situation. First, I really need to apologize. This week's community post was confusing. I posted about this week's incredible teardown. At the same time, I included pictures of this 6.7 power stroke, and many of you thought that I was going to tear this down. Well, it turns out that even though this truck is one of the hardest wrecks I've had in the shop, the frame is bent up like a pretzel, this is actually where the, the tow hook was. The engine survived this, which is just, it just blows my mind. It did break the timing cover, sheared off a couple bolts in the block, but we'll be able to extract those, replace the timing cover. It turns over great, and I'll have a good, relatively low mileage 6.7 power stroke. Hopefully I'll get a core on that. That's the idea. Then I will have one to tear down, but this one stays together. I only tear down bad engines on this channel. Speaking of bad engines, Two weeks ago, I tore down a Kia Sorento V6, which I swore would be the worst core we'd see on the channel. But now I'm kind of second guessing it. What do you guys think? Is the Honda worse than the Kia? 
Let's look at the facts. So both of them destroyed five rods. They each had one rod remaining, but the Honda rod was bent, whereas the Kia's remaining rod, it wasn't. It did break the rod cap bolts, or one was bent, one was broke, but the Honda engine also had two extra holes in it, and the heads looked considerably worse. So I think, based on those facts, that the J35 Honda V6 is, is the king. It's the king of teardowns as far as how bad it can get on this channel. Now, I've done only 109 or 110 teardowns at this point, which I guess that's a lot. It's been two years. But I think that's the worst one in the two years on this channel. If you guys think one was worse, please, please let me know. But for percentage of engine destroyed, this one, I believe, takes the cake. Now, there's not really much to sell out of it. If you'd like the one remaining rod, or actually, the Kia engine, I scrapped the block before I posted the video, and I had a couple people that wanted that for a coffee table. I'm not going to do that this time. If somebody wants this Honda J35 for a coffee table, I'll sell it for, what, scrap price? I, I'd hate to throw something away or scrap something that someone wanted. So if you'd like to buy anything out of this engine or anything else I've torn down, or if you need parts of this 11 Super Duty, I'm going to leave our email in the video description. You can also go to importapart.com, peruse our inventory. If you don't see what you're looking for, you can fill out our part request form, which will send you and send us an email of exactly what it is you're looking for. I really hope you enjoyed this teardown. As always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one. Well, Eric, you may have finally done it. You may have found the worst engine you've ever torn down in your life. The real question, how will you possibly find one worse than this? You have to live with the fact that you may not. However, the future isn't written, there are many engines out there, and there are a lot of people who don't check their oil. Just remember that.